In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build your own custom click to reveal with force navigation and audio narration. Today I saw in the comments of one of my videos, someone was complaining about one of the widgets built in the all new Adobe Captivate version 12. And I got to thinking about this and it's like, well, you know, you are an e-learning designer developer. If a built-in solution doesn't work for you, you need to be adept enough to be able to build those custom solutions. And I got to thinking, well, if I wanted a particular click to reveal with audio narration and to have it work the way that I wanted to, what would I do? So I've started to build that project here today. We'll take a look at my screen here. Simply put, I have a standard paragraph block at the top here, and I'm showing a subtitle and a body. Decided the title was just too darn large, so I stuck with subtitle here, and I put my content in simple enough. Next, I added an image grid, just like you would find here, just like this with four steps, because of course I'm doing four steps for conflict resolution. And what I did right out of the gate here is I selected the narration that my character will be giving, and I set it up to be, in this case here, hide during publish, okay? So we're not gonna see this when we arrive on this slide. Same thing I did for all the images of my character who I'm calling Susan in this interaction here. Finally, I added a button block at the bottom here. And in this case here, I have a previous button which will be shown when you arrive on the slide and the next button, which actually will be hidden during publish. So we won't see that right away. Now here's my plan. I'm gonna have some slide narration and when I click on each of these four steps, I'm going to see the facial expression of my character and hear the narration and, of course, read the narration of what she's saying. Once my learner has clicked on all four of these, the next button will appear. And what's really cool about this is you don't need to create variables to keep track of what's been clicked on. You can actually just do that natively in Captivate 12. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click a few times in my scrap area, make sure I don't have any components or objects selected. And I'm gonna gra grab the narration file and just drag it into the scrap area. And that's going to apply it to be slide audio. Do I want to extend the time? Absolutely. One thing I like to do when I've added audio is open up my timeline, expand the slide itself, click on the one second mark, and then right click on my audio clip to start the audio from the playhead position. This pushes out the duration of my slide a little bit. And then now I'm gonna click on the half second mark, right click on that same audio, and start audio from playhead position. And what that does for me is it gives me a little audio break, half a second at the beginning, and a similar half a second at the end there. Now, here's what we wanna do. When we arrive on this slide, we're gonna play that audio, and the learner can, of course, click on one of these four items and interrupt the audio, and start hearing the audio of our character Susan and what she has to say at each of these steps. Now, how we interrupt the slide audio is actually kind of an interesting thing. A little bit different. We used to have that option with interactive objects in Captivate 2019 and earlier that you could uh, stop slide audio when you click this, but we're gonna do it a little bit differently here. So we'll start to build our first interaction. I'm gonna select describe the behavior. Click on the interactions icon in your properties inspector toolbar. This opens up the interactions panel here and we'll click on add an interaction. Now for every interaction, there's a trigger and you can do different triggers for different things. In this case, we're simply going to click on this object. So what's going to happen when we click on this object? Well, the first thing we're going to do 
we need to interrupt that audio that's playing on the slide. And the one way I've discovered how you can do this is you can pause the timeline. Okay, so there's our first action. Click Done. Now I'm going to add another action. In this case here, we're going to stop the audio from any of the other objects that may have already been clicked. So we're going to go More and we're going to stop media. Okay, click done. So we're stopping our slide and we're stopping any audio that may already be playing. Next, we want to show the text and show the image for each of our click to reveals. So add a new action. And unlike previous versions of Captivate, we can do this in one action because we just need to find the text and the image from this show option here. So I'm going to show the first image of our character that we've called Susan, and we just need to find the text. And again, Captivate 12 is really good at highlighting the object you're about to select here. So I can select to show both of these in one action. Click Next, and Done. The last thing I want to do is play the audio clip for this particular click to reveal here. So we're going to add new action. We're going to click on more and we're going to play media. And I'm just going to browse to my desktop where I happen to have Susan 01. And we'll click on open. And now we can click done. One of the things that you can do, and it probably doesn't make a big difference in this case here, but you can select all your actions and you can merge them together so that they happen all simultaneously. Usually it's pretty quick anyway, but sometimes it's nice to have them all seemingly happen simultaneously here. Okay, so if I click away, we can see I've created an, an interaction for this object here called text4. Technically, I should relabel this object so that it's easy to tell what it is. But again, Captivate 12 is excellent at hovering over things and seeing what they are right on your screen there. So that, you know, almost negates the need to label your objects. In this case here, I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to copy those interactions. And will this save me time? Possibly. If nothing else, it gives me a guide to follow when I'm creating the remaining interactions for this slide here. So let's right click on the second one here and we're going to paste those interactions. So I have everything I have in the first click. I just need to change a few things. Pause timeline still there. Stop media still there. But I'm going to show some different objects. So I'm going to double click on the target here. We're going to unselect the ones that we had from the first set of actions. And now we're going to select our new character there and what she's saying here. I got to find the right one. That's it there. Again, make sure you deselect the ones that were there from before because that's not going to really help you in this case here. Click on Next, and I'm going to click Done. Lastly, we need to play the second clip for Susan. So I'm going to double click on this. I'm going to double click on the target, click Browse, and we'll select Susan 2 from my desktop here. Okay. Once again, I'm going to copy those interactions, select my third object, and paste those interactions. And we'll quickly just change a few things here. So again, we'll deselect our previous targets. So we don't need those. But we will select the image of Susan and just find the right message for that particular click, press Next, and then Done. And this is the third clip for Susan's audio. So we'll double click on that, double click on the target audio clip, 
browse and replace it with Susan03. Let's go to the fourth of our click to reveals here. We can paste what I previously copied, that's fine. And I can double click on the show, double click on the target, and we'll just unselect what was previously selected. Go down to the end here and select our fourth and the statement that she makes here. Click next, click done, and we'll change this audio clip to Susan's fourth clip there. Click open, and now I can hit done. If I click in my scrap area, you can see there are all four of my click to reveals. The one thing I'm missing still is how do I get the next button to show up? Well, again, we're going to click in our scrap area to make sure no object is selected. And next to slide interactions, we're going to click on the plus here. The trigger for this particular part of the interactions is when certain objects are clicked, we're going to do something. So we're going to select objects clicked and we're just going to find our objects here wherever they might be there's one of them describe the behavior there's another one there specify the new type of behavior is the third one and identify the consequences so we're saying when all four of these are clicked what do we want to have happen? Well, we're going to show our previously hidden next button. Let's press next and done. One last thing I'm going to do is because I'm doing forced navigation, I'm going to turn off my play bar because I don't want people skipping this interaction. So let's preview this now and see how it works. Okay. Here is an example of the four steps to resolving workplace discrimination or harassment. Now, if I click one of In these, example, I should interrupt the narration. Alex, earlier you told a there joke about my ethnic group here in the office. I am offended by jokes like this because it's demeaning to me. I would appreciate it if you would stop telling jokes that make fun of people's race. If this continues, I will have to speak to our manager or HR about it. And as you can see, the next button appeared only once I selected the fourth item there. So we're good to go. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.